Yeah, we have not changed our guidance. We stay at the last of part for this year. The first quarter was indeed a good, uh, a good quarter. If you actually strip out all the, the, the what I call the funnies like the weather and the OPEC quota and all of this, so the uncontrollables for us, if you look at the controllables, our new fields actually added 200,000 barrels per day production and our natural decline of fields were almost 150,000. So it was actually a good quote in terms of production. But we benefited from, from weather, we benefited from uh, from uh, some other some, some other long time uh, effects. 2010, yes, indeed, I said it's a difficult year. Uh, last year, I think Q1 has has shown that in some parts of the world, we, are grow, uh, we and the industries are growing a little bit faster than anticipated. So I would say that um, uh, Asia, Asia Pacific, and the Middle East are growing um, substantially again. I think the US is picking up and uh, Europe is, is slightly lagging still. I'm still somewhat um, uh, concerned about the second half when the stimulus packages actually start to slow down. How much of the normal demand they can actually compensate for the stimulus package. So we'll see how this works in the second half. Um, the impact on the oil price a lot is, has been discussed and has been written about. I think the oil price is really um, has two effects at the moment in the price itself. One is there is a strong demand expectations being in the, the short and medium term being reflected in the price. So the market sees a strong recovery in that sense. And the second one is the restrictive OPEC position um, where they still have quite uh, two million of barrels actually shot in. That keeps actually the market in, in a certain balance. And I don't see that actually changing that, that fast. I, I think we have a longer term time horizon, so let me broaden it a little bit. Our um, calculations are as follows. The energy demand will double between now and 2050. You have currently rough, roughly 80% of fossil fuel, fossil resources delivering the energy demand today. We still see this around 60% by 2050. Because the alternative energies and, uh, and the renewables, they will grow substantially to 30, 40%. But the growth rate will be also substantial. So in order to cope with that, there will be continuous need to actually um, for fossil resources over the next uh, decades, so not just the next 10, it, it will be for decades. Uh, in order to actually um, allow renewables and other energy sources the time to technically develop, commercialize and build market share. So I, from that point of view there's plenty for us to do, there's plenty of growth and um, we are well positioned as Shia to actually capture that in a way that we deliver more energy but at a cost which is significantly lower for the environment. 